In the digital age, it is hard to comprehend that we once communicated by a system of sockets on a switchboard. Telephone operators, typically women, would connect people by connecting the correct plug into the corresponding socket. The technology began quite crudely with the first switchboard crafted from carriage bolts, teapot handles, and bustle wire in 1878. Early telephone service was initially available only to subscribers, but as it grew in popularity, private companies would provide the service while local and state governments oversaw regulations. Also growing in popularity was the job of managing the switchboard. Initially, teenage boys were used as operators, but they failed to prove that they were up to the task. In 1888, Alexander Graham Bell hired Emma Nutt, the first female switchboard operator. Her warm cadence and efficient switching convinced Bell that women, not men, should be at the helm of the new technology. When World War I broke out across Europe, the Allied powers struggled with signal communication between gigantic modern armies from multiple nations. The answer was a newer technology still being perfected back home and in Europe, the telephone. Telephones and switchboards for use on the battlefield were created and thousands of miles of telephone lines were erected or buried across Europe. America entered the war in April of 1917, shifting the momentum of the conflict to the Allied powers. Later that year, the American Expeditionary Forces were created, led by General John Pershing. A key decision by General Pershing upon his arrival in France was a staffing change. But this was no ordinary personnel move. To improve communication, Pershing ordered the men in charge of the switchboards to be replaced by women, specifically well-trained American switchboard operators. At the time, women were not allowed in the military. However, the U.S. Army Signal Corps put out the call for French-speaking women with communications experience. More than 7,000 women, who at the time were still unable to formally serve in the military or even vote, volunteered to serve their country. In March of 1918, 100 women were given orders for duty, and soon after, the women arrived in Paris. They would later be joined by an additional 113 women and two men to serve in the Signal Corps Telephone Operator Unit, oftentimes in combat locations. The group would become more famously known as the Hello Girls. The moniker originated from the greeting that they used while answering incoming calls from war-torn battlefields. Just a simple and pleasant hello. The impact of the Hello Girls was felt immediately. Their professionalism and bilingual skills were welcomed by U.S. officers who struggled with French-speaking operators and ill-trained men. The Hello Girls connected more than 26 million calls at an astonishing speed of just 10 seconds per connection. That was six times faster than their male predecessors all the while making history as the first female unit to contribute to combat operations in the history of the American military. But the Hello Girls were more than just switchboard operators. They often visited field hospitals to talk with wounded soldiers. They refused to leave their post when a telephone exchange building at the first army headquarters caught fire and rushed back into the still smoking building to continue their work once the fire was put out. The actions earned seven of the Hello Girls Distinguished Service Medals. Though initially expected to handle only routine calls at the American Expeditionary Force Headquarters, the Hello Girls' professionalism and exceptional service quickly made them an integral part of World War I. As offensives moved, so did the Hello Girls, advancing alongside Allied troops all the way to the final major Allied operation the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. The Hello Girls worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week during the month and a half long battle, fielding countless calls to coordinate complex infantry advances, troop movements, and artillery placements for the battle that involved more than a million U.S. soldiers. 
when the windows of the telephone exchange building were shattered by shrapnel, the Hello Girls continued on. The battle was key to ending World War I. After the peace armistice was signed on November 11, 1918, many Hello Girls returned to Paris to translate during peace negotiations, while others traveled to Germany to help Allied occupation forces. By the time the fighting was over, two of the Hello Girls lost their lives to the Spanish flu, while others were wounded during service. World War I Chief Signal Officer Major General George Owen Squire would cite the women's unquestioned superiority as switchboard operators during the war. The Hello Girls left an indelible mark in the war fought abroad and other fights here at home. Post-war America ushered in a new era of civil rights movements, including the 19th Amendment of the Constitution, which granted women the right to vote. In 1948, women were formally allowed into the military. Despite the important role that they played in World War I, the Hello Girls received little recognition upon their return to civilian life. Because they were considered employees of the military, the Hello Girls initially received no bonuses, disability, or military honors funerals. They petitioned the government for decades, and it wasn't until 1977 that Congress officially awarded the Hello Girls veteran status. Sadly, it was after most of the Hello Girls had died. Today, there is a bipartisan call to honor the Hello Girls with a Congressional Gold Medal for their service in World War I. The Hello Girls are an exceptional part of the Signal Corps history, selflessly serving their country and paving the way for women in the military, all with a calm demeanor and flawless execution of their duties. For more about the Signal Corps, visit gordonhistoricalmuseum.org.